And now, suspense. Your host is Autolite, and this is Rex Marshall speaking for the Autolite family. Friends, a distinguished member of our family is Kaiser Fraser, which recently announced its new model cars for 1952. You see, Kaiser Fraser is one of the leading manufacturers which use Autolite products as original equipment on cars, trucks, tractors, airplanes, and boats. Yes, the Autolite family is a large family. It includes 96,000 distributors and dealers in the United States and thousands more in Canada and around the world. And then, of course, there are the nearly 30,000 men and women in 28 Autolite plants in this country, as well as other plants in many foreign countries. And over 18,000 people who have invested a portion of their savings in Autolite. Well, tonight, the entire Autolite family joins together in this salute to Kaiser Fraser. A little bit later on, it'll be our pleasure to introduce the general sales manager of Kaiser Fraser, Mr. Walter DiMartini, who will describe the new Kaiser Fraser cars for 1952. And now, Autolite presents Suspense. America is a funny country, and Americans are funny people. They never know when they're licked. This stubbornness, this dedication to an ideal, often wins for us the last seemingly hopeless round. This is the story of such an American, Paul Morgan. He came out of the Middle West, Rushville, Illinois. Stubborn and dedicated, he made the human race shine a little brighter, for he sang the Lord's song in a strange land, China. In 1949, the Chinese Communist Army was sweeping down from the north, engulfing the whole of that wise and ancient land. In May 1949, they had not yet arrived in Chunqing, the city where Paul Morgan lived and worked. But enemy scouts were there, working in secret, waiting. Speak English. It must be done. Our army is moving in. And blood will run. Tell General Yong, I will clear the city of all Western. Good. Good. learn to light the candles properly. Here, now look. Now let me show you. You see, you first put it up there, like that. Then, when you've lighted one, you move to another, then another, four. There, you see? And be awfully, awfully careful that you don't burn yourself. Now you take it and try it over there, huh? That's our girl. Dr. Morgan. Ah, yes, Jensen. The patient is in the operating room. Okay, thank you. I must go back to my work. Goodbye. Oh, Mrs. Morgan. Mr. Chu. Is uh, Dr. Morgan here? Yes, did you wish to see him? Oh, you know he's operating on someone very dear to me. I'd like to know how she is, Mrs. Morgan. My husband's been operating for a half hour. I, uh, 
hope these planes don't disturb us. My husband has nerves of steel. They will drop no bombs on Chunki. They're communist planes, aren't they? They are headed for Shanghai. How do you know? Oh, oh I know. Scalpel, please. Have a brow, please. I'm concerned about that bombing. See how the patients are taking it. Oh, uh, nurse. Is it over? Is he through? Mr. Chu, this is a hospital. You shouldn't litter it like that. Uh, your Western notions of cleanliness amuse me, uh, Mrs. Morgan. Our children are taught that cleanliness is next to godliness. Western ideas should remain in the West. If they had, this city would never have had this hospital. My husband has dedicated his life to it. Yes, I know. Why, when we came here, this place was a wilderness. We helped clear the land, we even built the chapel with our own hands and watched the hospital grow. Oh, missionaries are wonderful people. A medical missionary, most wonderful of all. Thank you, Mr. Chu. You're welcome. Well, the nursing chart says the patients are taking it very calmly, Doctor. It's the building I'm worried about. Good. Well, they won't bomb the hospital. But Han says the vibrations have loosened the old plaster. A large piece has already fallen from the ceiling in the chapel. Uh -huh. Very light bandages and wet dressing. And I want her watched carefully for the next 24 hours. Yes, sir. Uh, Chu? Uh, how is my wife, uh, Dr. Morgan? It's going to be all right, Mr. Chu. Hello, dear. Oh, my dear. I was so worried about you. I don't see how you could operate with these... Planes over here. Oh, death in the sky is not nearly so terrifying as death from a shaking hand. That thought disciplines me. Your wife came through beautifully. There's nothing to worry about. I'm very grateful to you, Dr. Morgan. Hello. And uh, now I have uh, something to say to you. Uh oh, no, uh, not now. I, I need it in the chapel. You'll excuse me, please. Money to restore this. Put it back where it belongs with Paris. Oh, that's just too bad. Mr. Chu, you have contacts with the Communist Army, haven't you? I? Oh, oh no. And I'm sure you can trust me. I don't deal in politics. I've come here to serve the body and the soul of China. All China. Mr. Chu, all Chinese. Uh, what is it you want for the Communist Army, Dr. Morgan? Persuade them to stop flying their planes over the hospital. Oh, why, uh, why, certainly I shall try to use my everywhere. Thank you. However, for your own safety, I advise you to leave the city at once. That bomb came very close. Oh, mistake, I'm sorry. Mistake? I think I have a sign right over the hospital telling that it is a hospital. Yeah. 
Oh. It's eight o'clock. Oh, Come. Thank you, darling. Well, I've been up with Mrs. Chu all night. Look at her still. How is she? Oh. You're alive, at any rate. I think she'll pull through those planes. She came out of the operation so successfully in those destiny planes. Well, drink your tea, dear. Thank you, darling. I don't know what I'd do without you. This came for you this morning. Ready at once, or you are lost. Quite frankly, my darling, I'm scared. I think you better leave. No. I've told you, Paul, I won't leave. Not without you. Dr. Morgan, may no. I see you for a moment? Cost it. Soldiers are parachuting out of those airplanes. They're landing on the outskirts of the city. Communists? Yes, they're coming in from all sides. The city will fall at any moment. You and Mrs. Dora Morgan, go now, quick. Hello? No, I'm afraid we can't leave, Jensu. You must, you must. Communist cells are already doing their work. Look at this leaflet. Dr. Morgan, thanks for using your influence. Your communists were prompt and effective. It was less than 24 hours, Mr. Chu. General! You're here! General Chu! General Chu. You will pack your things and get out. I am taking this place over as my headquarters. You will leave the country immediately. And if I refuse, you will not be so foolish as to refuse. I'm a doctor and a surgeon, General Chu. And what's more important, I'm a messenger. A messenger? I carry God's word. And I'll never leave China. Second act of Suspense. Chu Jiangji, Rong Jiangji asks you, can you take Dr. Morgan with you? I know Dr. Morgan is a symbol of Western democracy, but it's not so easy as I thought. Well, the people admire him too much. I have to do it my own way. You will be re removed unless you can get rid of him. Tell General Jung I will take care of Dr. Morgan's reputation first. Then I will take care of him. But how? I don't know. But surely that to me. Go now. How are you feeling, my dear? Leave us alone, Jinso. Uh, you will be happy to know that our army has taken over the city. Very soon you will not be able to find a single Westerner here. And you, my dear, will go down in history as the one who made this possible. You will be remembered as the great hero woman of the Chinese 
People's Republic. Haven't been sleeping well, uh, Dr. Morgan? I've been praying for your soul, my friend. Have you decided to leave China? I stand here a humble servant of God. I cannot, I will not fail him. We will uh, proceed with the trial. Quisha! For what crime are you going to try me? For saving your wife's life when your bombs poured plaster on her? Dr. Morgan, my wife is dead. Dead. I charge you with the murder of a citizen of the Chinese People's Republic. Are you ready to confess your crime? What crime? Do you deny that you murdered my wife? Answer me! Your question deserves no answer. He denies it. Of course he denies it. He did everything he could for your wife. What? Nurse! Jinsu! I understand, Jinsu. Take the stand. Uh, you were the nurse in attendance when my wife was operated on by uh, this uh, doctor? Yes. Did he seem nervous? He was worried about his patient. Airplanes were flying low. You admit he was worried. But not nervous. Or did he or did he not drop a scalpel in the midst of the operation? Yes. Uh, Dr. Morgan did not even complete the operation. You put the bandages on the patient, isn't that true? But that's a routine procedure in any operation. You deliberately neglected my wife because you knew she was the wife of an important general. She lied. I consider what you did murder. I have no alternative but to sentence you to death. No! No! General oh. Chu, you knew my husband would never do anything to harm another human being. His death will be a warning to all other Westerners to clear out of our country. But you can't kill a man just because you need a warning. Oh, no. You will see whether I can or not. He will be executed at five o'clock. <laughs> May God have mercy on your soul. Goodbye, Han. You've been a good and a faithful servant. Soba! Oh. oh, well, Dr. Morgan, you were right. General Chu, your wife's death was not accidental. Autopsy proves she died of suffocation. And you were with her when she died. You murdered your wife, General Chu. Oh, dead man is telling me that. Dr. Morgan, it's now ten minutes to five. I wish you a swift and happy journey. Into the grave!
Hey, men! Thy kingdom come on earth as to you heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Come on, though. this? Where are you taking me? It's five o'clock. What? It's General Chu. Han shot him. He's still conscious. Ginger! can't make a deal with me. My job is to serve. Anyone. Anywhere. Anytime. Tear these clothes off and give me your scissors. darlings. He gave me a pass of safety through all the enemy lines. <laughs> now, we'll stay here, darling, and we'll fight General Chu and all he stands for. Till this great ancient country has freedom again. And so we come to the end of another story of suspense brought to you by Autolite. Tonight we had the privilege of saluting a distinguished member of the Autolite family, Kaiser Fraser. We were happy to have had as our guest, Mr. Walter DiMartini, general sales manager, who told us about the new Kaiser Fraser cars for 1952. 
And now, this is Rex Marshall speaking for the Autolite family, inviting you and your family to join us again next week when Autolite brings you another story of suspense. Join us again next week for another story well calculated to keep you in suspense. Also, be sure to listen to Suspense each Monday night on your radio. The program you've just seen will soon be seen by members of our armed forces overseas through the courtesy of Autolite. This is the CBS Television Network.